He's our good friend, Gamebred himself, Jorge Mazvidal. Hey, what's up, Jorge? How are you? What's up, my brother? It's good to see you, my friend. You're looking fantastic as always. By the way, where are you right now? Could I ask? Uh, undisclosed areas, what people behind the computer telling me to say. Nah, I'm playing, man. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm in Vegas. Okay. Right now. So I had a little trip yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago. Or no, what, what day is it today? Today's Wednesday. Yeah. I was on Cali for like a couple of days and I was like, you know what? I mean, stop by Stockton. I've never been there. I heard the tacos are good over there. Maybe I'll run into Nate. We can make this fight happen. So I was like, yeah, let's go over there. Took the squad over there. Read down my number and a piece of paper. Started handing out to people that looked like they might know Nate Diaz. I met the butcher at, at the butcher shop. And he was like, yeah, I know Nate well. I was like, that's funny because he's vegan. But whatever. I'm just looking for beef, man. So you let me know how I find this motherfucker. You know, he's like, I know. Hey, bro, I'll get you. I'm, give me your number. I got you. I'll make this happen. So I gave my number out to this fucking dude. I gave it to a couple of people. I heard Nate's not that good with the technology, neither am I. So I was like, fuck it, maybe we could just do this old school style. Just meet up on the face to face and make this shit happen, you know? Okay. Well, it was it was kind of wild to see you out there in front of the, you know, the signage and all that stuff. Was that your first time in Stockton? Yeah, first time in Stockton. First what do you think of it? It's, it's kind of like this mythical place in America, considering the Diaz brothers and how they made it famous. What do you what do you think of the 209? What was your experience like? Food was pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie. I went to this place called, uh, was it Lumberjacks? Right? That Lumberjacks. Shout out to Lumberjacks. Pretty damn good. Some good pancakes, some good fucking breakfast burritos. Then uh, I had some good tacos as well. Um, the city, uh, wasn't a lot of people where I was at. It was There was some people, but it wasn't like crazy packed. You know, maybe everybody was working in some of the, the areas that I went to. I went to the Chinatown. It was like empty. Nobody was there. So I was looking for the people. At least where I was at, it's kind of like the ghost town part, maybe. You know, I don't know. Okay. I and, went everywhere. Um, did you actually ever see Nate? No, nah, I didn't see him, no. Nah. But I ran into like 100 people that said they know him, and then they said, uh, you're in the wrong county. You got to go over to the next county. Um, what's it called? Lido. Lido. Yes. Lido. They said he's from Lido, man. You ain't, you're in the wrong spot. You, you fucked up. You wasted all this time and money to come over here. You got to go over there. And I was like, shit, man. I don't think I got time for all that today, bro. I got flights to catch and shit. So we didn't get to go over to the next county. But yeah, Stockton was cool. Um, uh, around a month or so ago, there was a report that came out that there's a there's a sort of deal in place for you guys to fight each other in a boxing match. Is there anything you can say about that? There's no deal in place, but I would love to fight this motherfucker in a boxing match. You know, Obviously, I would have loved to have done an MMA. And uh, you know, when he was free and I was free, it just wasn't working out. I was competing against Usman for the title. Uh, during that time that he was still with the UFC. And then uh, shortly after that, he got released, you know, so I, I uh, not released, but he ended up, he finished out his contract. So we didn't get to make that happen. Now the UFC is so gracious and uh, we struggle a great deal. They're going to let me box for a couple matches. Nate could be one of them, hopefully, man. I would I would love to do it. We got unfinished business. We're both uh, guys that get after him. We're fucking trying to hurt the, the opponent. You know, I think in boxing, um, he gets a lot of credit. He channels, you know. But Chell would be one guy that I would love to break his eye over. Just because he's such a cheating fuck. Like, if you take... he He's gotten caught with more substances in his body than any other competitor in the history. At one time, he had, like, six or seven different substances in his body for one of his title fights. It's like, you're a fucking piece of shit human being. You could go out there and hurt somebody just for you to fucking make a paycheck. Because when you're on steroids, as everybody knows, you become, like, a super soldier. So, Chell would be somebody that... I would love the fuck up, man. And I would just tell him, do all the steroids you want. It don't matter. I'm still going to break your fucking eye over the bro. Did you guys have like a run-in or did he say something about you to where it's so personal now? A run-in? You, you crazy, bro. That guy, when he sees me, fuck, no way, bro. That guy's always been my biggest fan ever. Now, he's got them Twitter fingers, but there's numerous videos of him giving me praise and all this right. shit and this and that, you know. But, uh, no, it, you know, it really started kind of because of you. He, he started talking shit. I took your side. And I, and I really don't like this pussy anyways, you know. It's just yeah, fucking, it's my fault. Uh, yeah, no, it's not your fault. I'm the one that spoke up, but he's just a crotch sniffing bitch, you know, at his best, you know, at his best. Steroids, seven strands of steroids, training camp, six months. All he would do is hug a leg and fucking pray for a fucking uh, decision, you know? So not my cup of tea, obviously, and um and shit like that. And plus, he's a fake-ass gangster. What is it? This guy's got fucking, what, fraud real estate charges or something? Because he ain't definitely no fucking gangster. But, you know, it's that new age shit. People fucking say shit and do shit, and then your little followers and minions believe it, you know? But... Him and Kobe the same clock, bitches. Um, so, c could I just ask last thing about your fighting? 
when do you think we'll find out? Because you, you say that the UFC gave you the clearance, so you're back. You're going to fight in boxing. You, you want to have that match. When do you think we'll find out what your plans are as far as your fighting career this year? Shit, I don't know, man. I got no idea, man. Um, you think so? I'm a free man. Now I, got, I ain't got no charges, no cases on me, no yeah. probation. So maybe make this shit happen sooner than later. I'm, I know it's going to happen this year. I just, I don't know. Okay. When and stuff, there's a lot of paperwork, the hard, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, and all that bullshit politics. But I'm ready to throw down, man. What, why'd you tweet I'm you're dead safe. to Nate? Um, I went into a sparring session, sparred some motherfuckers up that are supposed to be pretty damn good. Oh, I fucking lit them up. And I was like, man, <laughs> it was just a feeling, not like I'm physically going to kill this dude or something. But on the day we step into that boxing ring, you're fucking dead, bro. We're going to go boxing. I'm going to leave you in a box, bro. What do you think, by the way, of him versus Jake? Like, his skills? What I didn't like from Nate in that fight is that, you know, from, you know, I've been watching Nate, I don't know, 16 years. He, he's been near my weight. You know, he was at 155 or 170, and so was I. And we were the same organizations. Um, so I've, I've always seen Nate, you know, and I just didn't think for that fight he was prepared. Like, I, I, I think he just fucking said, bro, I'm fighting this Disney kid. And he literally came up off the couch and maybe two, three weeks he trained getting ready for, for Jake. And, and he didn't give it the, what he probably, the, the type of shape that he should have been in. I know for a fact he won't make that mistake with me because he knows I'm trying to put him out. And if he's not in shape, I'm going to 100% put him out just quicker, you know? So one one thing I can say about that fight is I, I, I don't think he respected as much as he should have, you know? Okay. Well, that would be fascinating. I'm very curious to see how this all turns out. And didn't even know that you would be in Stockton when, when we booked this because uh, the reason why we booked this was because you have your next show this coming Saturday in Orlando. Game bread, bare knuckle MMA, title fight, Junior Sagano, Dos Santos against Alan Belcher, who fucking kidding. old school fans will remember Alan Belcher as a 185er, has now had great oh, success yeah. as a heavyweight, and especially oh, in this yeah. world. Uh, why are you so excited oh, yeah. about Cigano versus Belcher? Well, we run it back to last year when we started this. We had um, Junior Dos Santos versus Fabricio Verdun on one side of the bracket. We had Alan Belcher versus Roy Nelson on the other side of the bracket. We let the cream rise, you know. Um, Alan Belcher, Roy Nelson, very close fight, very competitive fight. Boom, we got the winner of that. Kind of same thing with... Uh, Fabricio Verdum and, and JDS, JDS won. It, was, it wasn't like a, a crazy back and forth fight. He won, but it wasn't like the biggest uh, margin and separation between him and Verdum, you know? So I think both these guys got that in the back of the head where they're like, fuck, bro, I want to make a statement. I want to go out there. And now that I know what this MMA bare knuckles like, laid out on the line, I've been talking to both competitors a lot, and both of them are in the right place. Um, in the case of Allen, he's been training since his fight with Roy Nelson, so I expect him to come in tip-top shape. JDS hasn't stopped training as well either. I've been seeing pictures, talking to him as well on video, and he looks fucking phenomenal, you know? We got the open workout today, which you could check, you could check out with our partner that I'm very, ha very, very happy, man. Um, me and my team, we, we attack the, the world of MMA a lot. We see where it's also going. Streaming is obviously... Yeah. It's not now. It's been already this fucking massive tsunami. It's just fucking coming in on everything. So we wanted to partner up with the biggest streamer, some of the front runners in the fucking streaming race and kick by far as the leader from seeing the numbers, seeing what they're doing, what they're going to be doing. So this deal, I could say, is one of my favorite and most fucking not just lucrative deals, but best deals for the company as far as getting our name out there. And like I said, it's free. So everybody gets to fucking watch everything they were doing on Fight Week, behind the stage, all that shit. Free as can be. And that's always what I wanted to do is just show this product to the world and let the world decide where where this product falls. Do, do you know... Um what number event this is for Game Bread Bare Knuckle? What are you at now? Like five, six? Um, here's the thing. So we had a couple events, our, our test events in uh, Mississippi. Yeah, I remember. And Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah, we, we had a bunch of those. And then we, you know, um, we did a little blueprint. We kind of stepped it up a little bit and we, we changed the name. We started investing more money. So it's, it's still the same company, still the same people, but we did change up the name slightly. So really, in my eyes, it's like event number eight that we do a bare knuckle, number seven, something like that, I think. Um, but with, with the new company, it's our fourth event. The reason I ask that is, you know, you've been around this game a long time. Uh, I, as well, not as long as you, but obviously have seen promotions come and go. And I think some people thought like, oh, you know, a fighter's promotion, this and that. Uh, oh, this will last two events, like affliction, and just kind of go away. Here you are approaching your 10th event. With, with bare knuckle, and I know you've done other disciplines as well, and 
you just signed this deal. It seems to be going well. Is are you happy with where the business is at, where you currently oh, stand? I'm extremely happy. Okay, I'm extremely happy. More, more so, all this is possible only and utterly because one of the strong team that I have with me. Because uh, I'm just one guy. I'm just recruiting guys. I'm matchmaking and I'm doing this interviews and, and, and talking to you about it. But behind me, there's a very strong team that is making all the fighters feel comfortable, getting their medicals done, transportation, commissions, venues, all that stuff. So big shout out to my team, Dean Two and the Pensacola boys, Victoria Gonzalez, Chris Edward Noria, all these motherfuckers make up, uh, make this dream possible. So it's, it's fucking an amazing fucking feeling. Um, I've also thrown a couple boxing shows. Maybe we're like on six boxing shows that we've thrown. And uh, we did Icon MMA Glove for about eight shows. We were in UFC Fight Pass for a year. And uh, we just finally found the home for it. It's going to be starting at the end of the year. We're going to have Icon back as well. And this is something that I love, man. I just love to compete myself, but also to promote. It's And it's so intertwined. It's, it's kind of like the same thing for me, you know. So I love it. I could do this all day. Just watch films of guys that I want to recruit. Then go recruit them and then get on your show and talk about these guys that I'm going to recruit. You know, it's like the fucking perfect marriage, you know? No, it's great. I give you a lot of credit because I think some people would like to do it for one or two events and then kind of realize how hard it is to put on an event. And I could see the passion that you have for it. Like as a promoter, it seems like you really enjoy it. It's part of the reason why you enjoy it because you're giving opportunities to guys, right? Like the Charles Crazy Horse Bennett's of the world and the and Joe Kuani's of the world and the uh, Chase Sherman's of the world. Like you're giving opportunities to fighters who need opportunities. Is, is that part of the appeal too? Uh, part, part when I started the league, I always uh, thought back to uh, the late great Kimball Slice. He, he invited me to his backyard, right? As everybody knows. And back then he was a rock star getting 30 million views of fucking fight. You know, and he invites this this spick from Miami that nobody fucking knows. And just him that he happened to be at the same gym and he thought I had good hands. He said, hey, man, come fight for my show. Get your shine on, you know, fucking walk through these doors and, and take what's yours, you know. And that always stuck with me because he didn't have to. And then that ended up being one of my most viewed fights. I mean, I'm not trying to exaggerate, but I've seen some videos that have. And there's so many videos of it that have like 30, 40 million views, you know. So that always resonated with me very well. So when I had the chance to do this as well, I'm like, man, I'm going to do the same exact damn thing for all these guys and as big as I can. I'm going to get this huge platform. I'm going to have all the eyeballs of MMA watching, and then I'm going to get the best, meanest, up-and-coming, well-established dudes that are free agents to come fight for us, and we're going to get them as much exposure as possible. And, you know, when, when this is a guy that was, like, fighting on the regular circuit, he was getting, like, I don't know, five, ten thousand 10,000 views per fight, and then he came on a show, and then he did, like, 500,000 views that's it, man. That fucking fills me with so much joy. It fills these guys up with joy. They fucking hit us back. They want to fight. They know they're getting crazy exposure. I mean, uh, when JDS fought Fabrizio Verdum, we had a five-hour stream. And in that five-hour stream, we had a million people watching. Wow. You know, I always say this, stat, but it's a fucking crazy one because that, that that's nuts to get, as you know very well, to keep yeah. A thousand people watching something for five hours is not the easiest thing, you know? So that definitely showed us, the investors and everybody part of the team that we're headed down in the right direction. We definitely have a product that the fans are fucking with and love, and we're the only ones doing it. So good luck, everybody else. What's it like doing business with Crazy Horse? Oh, I love this dude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call him that, though. He might, he might, he doesn't like it anymore. Is, is it, is that bad? It's felony. Oh, fuck. You call his ass. Sorry. You call his ass. Felony. No, bro. my bad. He prefers felony he over was. Crazy Horse, huh? You don't, you don't want him rolling up. He might be in your studio right oh, now. No, no, much love, cool. much love, Charles. I, much love, Mr. Bennett. I'm a big fan. I, I've always been a huge, huge fan of Felony. Um, Joe the Party comes to fucking fight every damn time. So this is one of my picks for fight of the night right here. I got about two of them. This is definitely one of them. What's the other one? Um, well, I'm not counting the main event. Uh, right. I, I kind of, you know, um, Alex Nicholson, Chase Sherman is going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a war. It, it's going to. But I know both these guys well. They fought already before, too. They're both from Florida, so I saw them both coming up in smaller promotions, worked their way through the UFC and all the other promotions that they fought in. Both guys are very like -minded. And you could go bet on these fights with our latest partner, Stake.com, that is our official partner Dang. for all the betting, everything, our main title sponsor as well. You know, so big shout-out to Stake. Um, huge, huge magnitude of a deal, you know, Um we're, we're, we're doing really, really well. And like you said, all those shows that, uh, that like we're here and that are not now here. I find a lot of those shows like overseas, some here in America. I don't know if you remember Bodog Ariel, yes. and you know, maybe you remember strike force. Yes. You know, you remember, you remember saying Goku, yes. um, all these shows I fought for and, and then they went on there, you know, and, uh, shit, I took a lot of 
took a lot of notes during that time, not knowing that I was going to be a promoter then, but I would just look into these things, you know. I mean, Bellator, I could say now, is is pretty much also not not around as sure. much anymore now, right? Because they just bought purchase. So that's another show that I fought in. And, I, and I've always noticed in shows uh, certain things that I liked as a fighter, promoter, and things that I didn't, you know. And that's what I try to bring into the game and keep the fucking fans happy, man. And what the fans want is... They're not looking for pictures of salads and who's eating what and this. They want fucking violence. So I go out there and I sign the most violent motherfuckers in the world. I convince them to take these gloves off. I pay them real well for that. And then I get them as much exposure possible. Put them on the fucking show and let the world fucking enjoy, man. Uh, what about getting it in as many states as possible? Because I, I know that there's other bare knuckle organizations that have been doing this. It, can you, if, if like BKFC is good, does that mean you're good as well? Or because you're a different form of bare knuckle does that mean you have to go out and try to get your own sort of licenses in these states? Do you know what I mean? First and foremost, we're the only MMA bear. Number. Exactly. Second, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, that's what I mean. Second, yeah, yeah. If if a commission if a commission says yeah you could do this bare knuckle, then that usually means you could do that bare okay, knuckle as okay. well. It's not a hundred percent always like that and that transparent, but more times than not, and definitely we're we're we want to make this legal in every fucking state, you know? Yeah. By the way, was there any talk of you fighting on 300? I know you were free, but there were some people who were like, oh, this could use a Jorge, this could use a Nate. Did they ever kick the can with you on that? Um, there was some flirting, definitely. There was a lot of flirting. There was a lot of this and that, you know, for the Miami card as well. Yeah. You know, how are you going to go to Miami and not have your boy on there, right? That's that's a common thought. Um, but fucking, yeah, there was a little bit of talk for it, you know, it just nothing materialized. Were you interested? Uh, yeah, big part of me was definitely interested, but I, I already had kind of like, I want to do boxing, man. I've been doing MMA for 20 years. I kind of just want to box and, and, you know, just have fun doing something else, something different. You know, I still, MMA is my number one sport, my number one activity to do, but, uh, yeah, I opted the, the boxing route for now. Are they going to bring you out to, uh, wrap the belt around the winner of Gaethje and Holloway, the BMF title fight? Oh, you got to ask Hunter and Dana. If well, I mean, it happened the last time. Remember that? I mean, it was did. But do you, you want to even you do did, that? Do you even want to do that? Oh, well, I'm I'm a humongous fan of uh, Max Holloway. Not that I don't like uh, Gagey, because I like I like the way he fights and all that. You know, um, maybe just a little sour that he beat my boy, my little brother Dustin. But uh, other than that, I mean, bo both guys are fucking great competitors. They put it all on the line to get the fucking finish to give the fans what they want. So, so I think it's a great title for BMF. Um. Obviously, I'm rocking with Max. I'm a fucking huge fan of this guy in and out of the cage. I love his fight style. You know, so I got my money on Max. Okay. By the way, you see this Ilya Teporia of Spain. See how big he's, he's blowing up, huh? I told you, motherfucker. Did you tell me what? Did you? <laughs> I, don't I told you. I told you. I told the whole world. I've been telling everybody about Johnny Eblen and my boy Ian. Yeah. yeah. That's right. We need to just get Johnny Eblen not to spend $85,000 on, on women in one shopping spree. That might be a problem, no? I mean, you know, I mean, he's just getting a lot of money, I guess. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm not his bank accountant, but he's getting a lot of money. Or, or maybe he likes to be like, damn, I got to go make some money because I just spent so much money right now that, that I got to knock this dude out and get a bonus or something. Maybe that's what he does. He like psychologically preps himself like that. I don't know, man. It's just a lot of money. I mean, one shopping spree, 85. Have you ever spent that much in one shopping outing? Uh... But what type of shopping? Like clothes? I don't know. I don't know what he was shopping. I mean, it seemed like it was clothes. It was eighty five thousand reportedly. Um, I've spent eighty five thousand, but I mean, I not on a car. On a, like on a car I, or something like that, I can understand. But like, it seemed like there was just clothes, and not oh, for that's a good one. and not for himself. That's a decent amount of clothes, right there, man. Um, yeah, but. This high end shit gets expensive quick, so I, know. I, I can see how I can get the eighty five. But nah, me personally, I haven't spent eighty five k at, at the Louis store, and I've, I've spent some decent numbers, but not eighty five thousand. I like that shirt. Who's I got, that? I got kicked. a meaty. Okay, ain't cheap either, brother. Yeah, I know. <laughs> By the way, I saw a video of you uh, rock climbing, and it didn't look like you had like any kind of like harness or anything. Do you know what I'm talking about? What What was that all about? And should you be doing that? Is that smart for you and your safety? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of rumors about me doing all that rock climbing shit. I mean, it, I mean, it's not rumors. It, it, you posted it on your social media. We're showing it right now. <laughs> oh, okay. It was posted on the social media. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't necessarily record the video or post the video. Okay. So I didn't know what was out there yet. But yeah, I, uh, 
I don't know. I've been climbing rocks without fucking those little ropes for a long time. And, you know, when looking at the video again, yeah, the, the angle looked a little steep. At the time, I was just like, I, I can't fall because I'll get hurt. But I didn't think it was uh, as crazy as it looked in the video. You know, it was it was a good time. I had, I, I you know, when I climb, I, my mind um, is so present at that moment. Yeah. And you're just so chill that I love it, man. It's like one of the best pastimes, you know, whether it's hiking now that I've been in Vegas for a while, I've gotten to do a lot of cool ass hikes and rock climbing. Something that I like to do on my downtime when I'm not at the gym, you know, and it just lets my mind be very present, not focus on my phone yeah. or what I'm going to do the next task. It's just like, don't fall, <laughs> don't yeah. fall, you know, and I love it. I love it. Do you live in Vegas now? No, I don't live in Vegas, but I, I could say I got like a little bit of a residency here. Okay. And uh, is there any particular reason for that? Just checking out boxing gyms staying in shape that you you know i was uh so and part of always and forever of the best mma gym that ever has been created american top team as everybody know down in south florida and i lived in miami which was an hour away from me and i would drive there every day happy as fuck with a smile on my face because i thought it was the best training that i could possibly get so uh coming out here to vegas i, I kind of felt like there's a lot of really really good training in vegas there's a lot of good boxers here and, and the lifestyle here is very fitting for for boxing so um I just been coming out here a lot, just trying to get in shape, see what it's like, see what the routine is like, and, and make my decision of where I'm gonna go. Um, exactly a year ago, this time, late February, you were getting ready for that fight in Miami, which you know you had, and then you retired. I remember we spoke right after, and you said you were pretty much done. Obviously, you're not done. You're coming back, but in boxing, what is the difference between this Jorge and the Jorge from exactly a year ago? Oh uh, shit, man. The mental space and a lot of the side shit that I was doing, a lot of the stuff that was coming my way, that was monetary, it was good stuff, it was good money. Um, I just cut off a lot of businesses that I had. I sold off, I liquidated a lot of things, and I just want to compete and do my promotions. And that that's something uh, mm. very important to me. And then on top of that, I just, you know, like if I had, if I knew 100 people last year, I know like, 37 this year you know wow so I, i've been coming off yeah i've just been cutting off and closing the doors and just i'm a fucking horse then you just have the blinders on and sprint you know so that's it man I'm, I'm i'm ready to compete i'm gonna be in much better shape than i've ever been in my life because i've been training already like i had a date and uh i just can't wait to get the date wow and uh why did you feel like you had to do that well you know uh, s several things happened um like right after I retired, like bad things, you know, like, oh man, fucking from personal business, e every which way, family. And, and I got into like, uh, like a serious depression because of it, because I, I wasn't working out at the time when I retired, I was like, fucking, my head was messed up knowing that if I don't train, I'll, I'll fall into like a depression because, you know, you need the guys like, uh, guys that have been doing this for a while. You need to feel those endorphins, that adrenaline pumping every day. If not, your body slowly but surely starts to think something's wrong, you know? So in the mix of that, I started getting really, really depressed. And then, uh, as as you know, and everybody knows, my my dad had like a little incident where he ended up getting locked up, and that was like the the camel and the horse's back. It just fucking devastated me. I I went back into the courtroom, saw my pops getting locked up again for like fifth time, you know. So it's, it's fucking uh very traumatic, very very strong. But it shocked me fucking so much to the core. That same day that they locked his ass up, um. I put my running shoes on. I hadn't done nothing for like a month and a week or something. And I went for a long run. Uh, I just ran for like an hour and change until I, I was completely fatigued. And when I came out of that run, I felt so damn good. And, and I had so many thoughts on how to fix the current problems and all these things. And I was like, I don't give a fuck if I never compete a day again in my life. And I mean this area because since that day to now, I've trained every fucking day whether there's something on the line or not just for self peace and, and for myself, you know, I did it for 20 years. Why the fuck would I just stop? So the main thing that, that I took away from that is that, man, I need to stay fucking doing my thing every day, no matter what happens. I got my routine. I need to get to do it. And then I'll do the rest of the stuff or whatever the world's asking me to do, but I need to wake up and train. That's that that's golden for me. And that is what led to me getting this boxing match and, you know, I told the UFC, let me do these boxing matches. I'll come back and do do another UFC fight down the line. There's a lot of guys that I'd like to take out, maybe some rematches as well. So we're going to see. Wow, that is great. I, di I didn't know about all of that, and I'm happy that you're on the other side of that. Just curious, um, since you brought him up, how is your dad's situation now? Oh, he's good. He's good right now. He's good. We still got court. You know, he's uh, 
He's out right now. We got court. We got trial and stuff. But yeah, it was like big news and stuff. Florida yeah. fucking everybody knew where I lived, so I sold my motherfucking house. The cameras came. Everybody saw wow. my backyard. There's like fifty something cops outside of my house. It was a whole fucking ordeal, you know. It was all over the press, the fucking national news and stuff. So it was a uh, it was like a tough time, bro. But your boy's back, man. Let's go. Okay, uh, and I can't wait to hear that news. For now, though, it's March second this weekend. In Orlando, if you're not in Orlando, it's on Kick.com exclusively. It's Game Bread Bare Knuckle MMA. It's Junior Dos Santos against Alan Belcher for your first ever title. It's the heavyweight title on the line. Alex Nicholson, as you said, we're showing the poster right now against Chase Sherman. And uh, Felony, Mr. Charles Bennett, as I like to call him, also on the card. A lot of familiar names on this uh, once again. And uh, it's great stuff. It's great stuff. I'm very happy for you, and I hope that you can continue this and give these guys these uh, opportunities. It's great to see. Oh, 100%. We got another five to six shows coming this year. So we're going to be in everybody's face, man. You, you're going to have no chance but to, to watch these fights and, and put up with them. And I'm going to keep inviting you to my show, Ariel. I will. <laughs> so you keep lying to no, your fans, tell no. them, yeah, I'm coming to the I next one and never show up. I will be at a Game Bread fight this year. That's my vow to you. All right. You said it, man, in front of all your fans. That's bro. right. That's right. They'll hold you. They'll hold you to it, man. And by the way, I loved seeing you uh, with Action in in Miami. Action Bronson. Oh yes, sir. That's the man right there. I love that dude. The Number greatest of all that time. Guy. That was great to see He's you two out there. Dude, what bro. a freaking legend! Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, would love to yeah, see. I gotta more. get him out to one of my shows, man. I gotta tell him. He's a huge fight fan. He would love it as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and he knows his shit well. He man. Does. He's been watching this the whole fucking time. He's been on. Much love to you, Jorge. Thank you very much for coming on. As always, good luck. Keep an eye on that. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.